Good evening, dear friends in uh, Victoria. As we continue uh, our study of the book of Daniel, I would like to welcome you today. And I trust that you are somewhat uh, steadfast in uh, checking the videos and uh, um, doing your study online and so on. I know that this is not the same as being personally in class at Oakland Bible Chapel and so on, but we need to continue to make the most of our time together to learn to carry on learning in the scriptures. I sure hope that you can see the board behind me and the PowerPoint properly. Contrast might be too high, but um, we didn't have time actually to, to redone the PowerPoint on a more crisp and sharp contrast and so on. Before we start with a short word of prayer uh, this evening, this evening, I would like to let you know that there will, no, there will be no video posted next week in the week to come uh, for any programs. The only the church on Thursday night will be on. The reason being, and I'm writing an assignment right now, a dissertation, it takes a lot of time, so I would, let it, I would like to dedicate uh, the, my next week to be able to write in planning for a graduation in June, Lord's permitting, since uh, the border for the United States are now closed and so on. I will need to travel to uh, Bakersfield in order to go and graduate. might be postponed, so I would like you to pray about these things and so forth. Let's uh, get into prayer together and uh, move on in our study. Gracious dear Heavenly Father, we come in prayer to you, Lord. Understanding and I hope trusting that you are in full of control of all things. Help us, Father, to an extent without disrespect to be bold enough to carry on with our life as usual, Father. What the government are asking us to do goes slightly contrary to the Word of God by ceasing to gather. So, Father, you are in charge. You understand each of us, each of our hearts. But unfortunately, Father, I know that too many people, including believers, are plagued with fear right now. That's what the media did manage to do because these fears are not coming from you. So Father, help us out in each our weaknesses and we cannot claim not to have any. And it does include myself. In the meantime, dear Lord, open the eyes of our hearts that we may see what we need to see in this session. In Jesus' name. I would like to ask you to turn on page 7 of 14, page 6, uh, six rather, of 14, but just as a review, 6 or 7, go to page 6. Now we have come to the point of the second vision, point 3 on page 7, but I just want to make a short review. Uh, the second vision of Daniel 7, chapter 7, 7 and 8 today, uh, the fourth beast, and so on. Trusting that you might see a little bit what's on my left and on your right here, the um, first beast and so on. If we know this by heart, that would be nice here because the uh, four Gentiles empire to come until the end of time and so on, until of course the establishment of the Messianic kingdom. So last week on chapter seven, verse four, we have seen that the first beast is Babylonia, the lion-like. Uh, the lion beast like and so on. The second beast is the, the empire of Medo-Persian. That's the bear, lopsided, that we have seen together because the Medes were stronger than the Persian and so on. And the third beast is the Hellenistic empire. That's the Greek empire. It's leopards like because of the swift conquest of Alexander the Great. We have looked at that slide also. And now we come to the fourth beast here. I need to do some reading, seven and eight and so on, and make a, descri a description of these things. So be patient, we'll take our time. It's gonna be somewhat of a shorter session today. Come with me, chapter seven of your book of Daniel, verses seven and eight. After this, I kept looking in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadly and terrifying and extremely strong, and it had large iron teeth, circle iron. 
It devoured and crushed and trampled down, circled, trampled down the remainder, the remainder with its feet. And it was different. It's a key word. Circle the word different from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns, circle ten horns. While I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, circle carefully, another horn, an eleventh, if you want, a little one, came up among them, and three, circle three of the first horn, were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, circle eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttering great boast. As I said last week here, it changes slightly. It changes in comparison to beast number, to empire number one, vision number two, and vision number three. Here, the fourth beast is in the script. There is no description like the first three. And here it's very unique because Daniel doesn't have anything to relate to. If you remember last week, I gave you Old Testament references about the lion, the bear, and the leopard and so forth, where Daniel had something to refer to from the Old Testament. Like I repeat, the first beast, Babylonian Empire, was like a lion-like, not a real lion, lion-like. The second one, the Medo-Persian Empire, was a bear-like. And the third one, like I said at the beginning, was leopard-like, which is the Hellenistic Empire. So here, it changes, and that's why I ask you to circle the word diverse or different, because it's a key word actually in verse 7. Here, this is the fourth empire, which we will be calling together imperialism. Imperialism. Remember the first three stage on the left page of your chart here that you have on page 12 here? Remember that what we have learned, if you can pull that out, it would be great. It's page 12 of 13 here. We went through the Babylonian here on the left-hand side, Medo-Persia, Hellenistic Empire, and then we came to the fourth empire, and it had three stages to it here. First stage was the United States, and I explained to you that the United States cannot be Rome in totality, just part of it. Number two, the two division stage. Number three, the ten division stage. And then capital E, the messianic kingdom here. So basically, it is here that Daniel will be adding some features or other things here. And we need to combine. That's why I told you often in class that the chapters 2 and 7 of Daniel are crucial. Because we need to study chapter 2 as we have seen on your chart, and then we study chapter 7, and at the end of it, we will combine chapter 2 and 7, just in order to have a full picture here of the times of the Gentiles. So, the United States, the first stage, is not Rome in totality. Rome was only that stage, the United States here. Verse 7, I did ask you to circle the iron, when it says, after this, I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadly and terrifying, and extre extremely strong, and it had large iron teeth here. So the iron teeth and the iron legs are the same metal in both. So if you go back in Daniel chapter 2, verse 40, it was the fourth empire. So the same metal in seen as both. Chap Daniel chapter 2, verse 33, and also Daniel chapter 2, verse 40. And how here it will trample down. I ask you to, uh, to circle the word, the expression trample down. And trample down symbolize a vengeance and crushing civilizations here. And it's in that case that this is diverse and different. The ten horns. In our context, right at the end of chapter uh, verse 7 here, the ten horns basically are corresponding to the ten toes of Daniel 2.41. So the ten horns and the ten toes of Daniel chapter 2 verse 41 are the same thing. In verse 8, I wonder if I have a slide on that. 
in verse 8. I sure hope that you see this one well, try to focus. I'm going to try to make a better job on that in the future. Verse 8. When I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horn were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttering great boast here. After a while, Daniel was meditating or contemplating upon the ten horns. Then came another one. So if you see well here, we have the little horn of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 8. And while Daniel was looking at the ten horns, another one, a little one, came out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's your ten horns here. And then the little one, an eleventh, that you can call it an eleventh, came out here. And it continues in the text like this. Came up, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like, 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 uh, possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttered great boast. So that's the expression, were pulled out. He, the Antichrist, will pull out, will kill three of them, leaving seven that eventually will submit to him. So that's the explanation of that verse here. The, the, eleven, the eleventh horn, that's the Antichrist, and he will uproot eight, nine, and ten, leaving only seven in the future. In verse eight, notice that it has the eyes of a man. He has unique knowledge. It has a personality and boastfulness. And needless to tell you that this is the very picture of the Antichrist and so on. Okay, I will come back to that slide in a moment here. Now we come to the third vision. I'm going to leave that there in case you want to make some more notes on, on so on. So now we came to the third vision, vision point four on your outline, page eight. Okay. So we have seen here the second vision, the four beasts, and the little horn. And now we came to point four, the third vision, in verses 9 to 12 here. Okay, sorry if I omit to say the, the Lord of case B. So we did the four beasts, okay, and we did the little horn here. The fourth beast is what we call imperialism. imperialism okay this is the fourth beast that we have seen okay this is not that the Rome is not the totality of imperialism and so on as we will see we are in the east west and balance and power and so forth so if you carry on doing your videotapes uh, seriously and uh, with diligence you should understand these things now we come to the fourth vision let's take this one together and then it's going to complete our studies for today. So let's take the fourth vision. It goes from verses 9 to 12. Let's begin with lowercase a, parenthetical a, the ancient of days, 9 and 10. I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the ancient of days, circle ancient of days, took his seat. His vesture was like white snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne, circled throne, was ablaze with flames, and its wheels were a burning fire, circled throne, and wheels. Verse 10. And a river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands were attending him, capital H, and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. The court sat, and books were opened. Circled the court sat, and books were open. Here, the scene is switching from the earth to the heaven. The scene is switching from the earth to heaven. You have a mistake in verse 9 in the King James Version. 
these thrones are not cast down. They are set up. I think the King James says cast down, and it's not properly rendered. The expression in verse 9 is were set up. The Ancient of Days is God the Father. The Ancient of Days is God the Father. The white snow, that I ask you to circle also, emphasizes holiness, is raiment and so on. The hair, being wool, is not age. God does not age. The emphasis is on purity, same as in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Wool, symbol of purity. The throne with fire and so on, you know already these th these things, that's the Shekinah glory, the visible manifestation of God's presence. And the wheels around are angelic being called the cherubim. Reference for the cherubim that you can study by your own. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 13 to 21, they turn in every direction, simply because the cherubim, they carry the throne of God. Flames and fire that you see often, all of it is symbolizing judgment. This is the same judgment, if you want the symbol of judgment, in Psalm chapter 97, verses 1 to 5. And the court sat in 10b, at the end of chapter, verse 10, the court sat, and judgment will be carried out by angels, often judgment are coming by means of angels, and so on. And in the context here, the context here is the judgment of the Gentiles. This is the same judgment of the Gentiles that we have detailed in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. And now we come to B, the destruction of the beast, in verse 11. The, destru the destruction of the beast in verse 11. And I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking. And I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body, circle body, was destroyed and given to the burning fire here. That's the destruction of the beast. Part of the judgment of verses 9 to 10 is the destruction of the fourth beast in verse 11. And noting, notice that the beast is destroyed only at the times of the little horn. And the little horn is the Antichrist here. Okay? So the fourth beast, the imperialism, before it comes to an end, have to go through several stages. This is important to make a note of that slide here. The fourth beast, the Antichrist, is destroyed only at the time of the little horn, which is the same as the Antichrist. And the fourth beast, the totality of imperialism, before it comes to an end, have to go through several stretch stages, and we are in one of these stages here. The fourth beast undergoes several stages, as you know. We will complete them in our study. And it is destroyed only at the time of the little horn. So we're not there yet. COVID-19 has nothing to do with these things. It's only the bird pangs of it type of thing. We are not yet in the Great Tribulation. And we have several stages to go through, as you already know here. Three things will be happening to the beast in verse 11. Will be slain by God, by Christ himself. Number two, slain, you have it in your verse 11, the beast was slain. Secondly, and its body was destroyed and, and given to the burning fire. Burning fire will be the fulfill, uh, this will be fulfilled in Revelation 19.20. I will read the Revelation 19.20 for you. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. And these two were thrown alive in the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. So this revelation will fulfill the famous verse that we are studying right now in Daniel here. Okay? 
So we have three other beasts here. I would like to finish with this, verse 12, today. So chapter 7, verse 12 for now. And chapter 7, verse 12 is lowercase c, the other three beasts here. I will explain this on your outline. Arabic number 4, lowercase c, the other three beasts, 7, 12. We finish our session with this, dear beloved. The other three beasts, 7, 12. As for the rest of the beasts, plural, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life, circle extension of life, was granted to them for an appointed period of time. So the rest of the beasts are the three previous beasts before imperialism. What are they? You know already. Babylonian Empire, Medo-Persian Empire, and Hellenistic Empire. This verse 12 can be understood in two ways, actually, and actually both of the ways are true. Number one, they are no more an empire. They are no more dominion and so on, but the people still exist as nation, okay? It's good for Babylonian, good for Medo-Persian, and the Hellenistic Empire. We have Greek people still. So they do not exist anymore as an empire, but the people still exist. And, and that secondly, turn with me in the book of Revelation, the second way to do it, Revelation chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. And the dragon stood on the sand of the seashore, then I saw a beast coming out of the sea, Gentile world again, having ten horns and seven heads, and on his horn were ten diadems, and on his head were blasphemous names. And the beach, beast which I saw, which I saw was like a leopard, Hellenistic empire, and his feet was look like those of a bear, Medo-Persian, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion, Babylonian. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and great authority. John here sees the same beast as the number fourth of Daniel's beast here. Number one, the leopard, like I said, Hellenistic Empire. Number two, the bear, Medo-Persian Empire. And number three, the lion, Babylonian Empire. And all, the number two, will leave some kind of an influence on imperialism. So the first way to take it, the people still exist, but no longer as an empire. And number two, the greed, the crushing and everything will leave some kind of an influence on the fourth piece, which is imperialism, which will, will come to an end once the Antichrist will be destroyed and so on. And then we will have the second coming. So. It's going to be not so with the fourth empire. It's not the, going to be the case of leaving an influence. Once the fourth empire, the fourth uh, empire, the imperialism will be destroyed. It will be climactic. It will be a climactic end. It will be a quick end and a final end. There will be no existence of any form. It will be totally replaced by what we expect and what we would like to see happening tomorrow, the second coming of the Messiah and the establishment of the Messianic kingdom. So be encouraged by this in that kind of crisis. We are what we are. Now we are in the Eastern and Western balance of power and we need now to shift into the one world government. It starts to make sense. They don't take cash in some places anymore. These governments will collapse, giving the, the way to the one world government, which we'll see again extensively in our chapter 7, so it's only a bird pangs right now, and what will give peace on this planet in reality, it's not Prime Minister Trudeau, Trump, or any Prime Ministers on this planet. There will be no peace on this planet, genuine peace, until my Messiah and your Messiah comes back. We bid you shalom. Thank you for watching, keep praying for us, and please keep forwarding your donation that we may carry on the work together. I will see you in two weeks and I know that you have some catching up to do.
it's the best time to study the scriptures right now. Let us not be dormant like the churches at large. Thank you. Bid you shalom.